What's going on guys? It is time for a, a very special episode of Behind the Uniforms here on the road. I've got my friend Eli Crane here with me. We are in a hangar in Westerly, Rhode Island because we we're just filming an episode of The Real Man Show. For those of you who have never seen this before, this is how we usually roll. It's typically the whiskey wall. We have some whiskey and these guys, either uh, law enforcement, military, first responder, they tell a couple stories about their experiences in life and they show that at the end of the day, they are just like everybody else. They wanna go home to their families. The only difference is that they are protecting and serving our communities and our country. So without further ado, Eli, you wanna introduce yourself, tell everybody who you are, your, your background, what you do now? Right on. My name is Eli Crane. I'm the founder and CEO of Bottle Breacher, and I'm a former Navy SEAL, and I'm honored to be here today. Honored to have you, man. So, you know, give me a little bit of context. At what point did you decide to leave the military and go into uh, veteranpreneurship, for lack of a better term? Right. So I decided to leave the military in 2010 during my last deployment to Fallujah, Iraq. And I decided to do that because I had one three-year-old at home and she barely knew who I was. She was scared, kind of afraid of me when I'd come home and that really bothered me. And in a sense, I joined the week after 9-11, the Navy. And so I'd always wanted to go make an impact and make a difference and go fight for my country. Um, and I felt like after three deployments, I'd got to do that. And I was looking for a new challenge, whether I did something new in the SEAL teams or got out and did something. And I was really leaning towards getting out and doing something where I could be around my family more. So that's when I decided that I wanted to get out of the Navy. I didn't catch the entrepreneur bug until probably about 2011 when I was invited to be a partner in a, the first business that I was ever a partner in. And I caught the entrepreneurial bug because I love the challenge and I love the freedom of it too. Um, talk to me a little bit about why you went into the military. <clears throat> you know, I grew up around a Marine Corps Air Base and I remember looking up to all the young men and women that served. And I, it was something so cool about their persona and just the way they carried themselves. You could tell that it wasn't just a, a paycheck, you know, an insurance to these guys. I mean, they carried themselves with a little bit extra pride. And my parents really instilled in me how great this country was and that freedom wasn't free. And so I knew that I, I wanted to be a part of continuing that. Um, what what was the training like? What was the qualification like? Talk us through that because that's not something that a lot of people discuss and it's not something that was easy. Oh, it surely wasn't easy for me. That's why it took me twice to make it through. Um, so a lot of people a lot of people know that it's the attrition rate is usually between like 75 and 80 percent. So not a lot of people make it through that training. And I sure did not my first time. And the reason I didn't make it through my first time was because I was immature. I was so, you know, more self-centered. I didn't think I was a really selfish guy or a bad guy. I would have loaned you $5. I would have even helped you move your furniture. But I was, I was telling somebody earlier today that you really don't find out what you're made of until you're at your worst. When you have no sleep, you've got no food, you're cold, you're wet, you're miserable, you're sore. That's when you find out who, what you're all about. Are you about self-preservation? Are you about your teammates? And the first time, I tried to go through training, I was definitely all about me and that, you know, they can see it from a mile away. And so thankfully I, I went out to the sh a ship for two and a half years and I met some really good dudes. I got a good dose of tough love and I got an opportunity to come back and go through training again. Thankfully I made it through um, and I got to go to SEAL, SEAL Team 3 and serve with some amazing guys. Talk to me about uh, some, some good, some tough. Uh, I mean, give, give the people watching some of the experiences that you've had, for better or for worse. Right. I would say that the toughest, the toughest times for me were losing some of my best friends and ge just getting phone calls that they, you know, we, we knew somebody was, somebody was killed overseas. We just hadn't got the name yet and you get the phone call and it's a good buddy of yours and he said, yeah, um, I'll never forget getting the phone call that my buddy Patrick Feeks was just shot down in, in a Hilo. Um, I was actually at Northwest doing a, doing an event up in Michigan and I'm not a crier. Like I, I never cry. And like, I just started tearing up and it was, it was not funny, but a buddy of mine actually walked in on me and I was like, Oh, you know, like I tried to like hide it really quick, right. but <clears throat> oh man, it just, the, he was one of my new guys in 2008, from 2008 to 2010. 
and you know even though we had to work with him and teach him some lessons he was like a little brother to me and then uh in 2000 see it would have been 2000 i think 13 14 i forgive me for not knowing the date but um my good buddy chuck keating was killed um, and he was one of my new guys with pat and those were those were the worst times because you you almost feel like you should be there with those dudes sure. um they're still they're still wearing the uniform they're still standing the watch and you're no longer there and it kind of makes you feel like you could be there maybe if you were there you know they'd still be alive and it it's kind of crazy to think that way but it doesn't stop it from happening why is it so important and we probably should have discussed this before but i'm going to put you on the spot a little why is it so important for us as a nation to have this conversation about post-traumatic stress well i think it's so important that you know people understand that you know you don't just a lot of people don't just come back from war the same way they left and i think it's just understanding the psychological effects of war really helps people understand why their dad or their brother or uncle Timmy, you know, isn't like he used to be. But it also helps them understand when, you know, it's time, you know, for these individuals to go to the VA and get care that, hey, we need to pitch in as a nation and make sure these guys get the care that they need. So I think that's why it's important that we have discussions about, you know, PTSD and stuff like that. Share with everybody a, uh, an upbeat story, positive story, a story about a good day. Oh, man, there were, there were just so many of them. I mean, that's I think what I miss the most about the SEAL teams is just the caliber of guys that you get to be around on a daily basis. They're just so hilarious, um, just constantly talking crap to each other. And it's just, it, you're, always com you're always competing with each other. And, you know, it was, it was interesting because I just talked about Chuck Keating. And it reminded me that today we were flying helicopters around here and I just, you almost had to remove the grin from my face for 10 minutes after we landed because it was just so much fun. And I was crying after. You were, I mean, you were crying, but <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to bring it up on air. But uh, I think it was in 2009, me and Chuck went to Bondurant High Performance Racing in Phoenix, Arizona. And all we did all week was race Corvettes. And it was just like, you're, you're like, I can't believe I'm getting paid to do this right now. So. I love fast cars, so I think that was probably probably the best work week of my life. How do you define yourself now? That's a great question. I think if I had to put it in order, I would say a son of God first, because to me, you know, that's the most important thing. That's that's eternal, and I don't want to get all preachy, but honestly, it's the truth. And uh, you know, I want to make sure that you know my life is a witness to other people. And um, I would say secondly, I'm a, I'm a husband and a father, and I love my family more than anything. And then after that, I'm a patriot. And we've been talking a lot about patriot, you know, being a patriot and what it means while I've been hanging out with you guys. And you know, at the, at the end of the day, it's, it's pretty simple. Being a patriot means that one, you understand that this country isn't perfect. Um, it never will be, so you have to be realistic. Two, um, you understand that this country is awesome and why it's awesome because we have freedom and liberty and you know just more opportunity than probably any country in the world and we're extremely diverse which is excellent as well but I think the last thing is that you look for the way you can be the most impactful to continue that legacy and that freedom and just what we've got going here so I think you know being a patriot would round out the list, but you know anybody that knows me knows that it's very important. Uh, Eli, you've got new products coming out? Yeah, we do. Um, we've got a new um, Halloween Freedom Frag coming out October 4th, which is awesome. I mean, if you like grenades that open your beers, it's pretty, it's pretty epic. And then we also launched the Bottle Breacher Football this, this last Wednesday, right? <laughs> After the whole debacle with the NFL and um, Let's see, we got a bunch of new products coming behind that. We got the Bottle Breacher Golf Ball. We actually have a combat cooler that we're gonna launch. We got a cigar bore. We've got a cigar bore. We've got a uh, combat humidor. It's like an ammo can that ha you know holds Get your cigars. It's, it's awesome, man. That's sick. That's one thing that we'll never have a shortage of at Bottle Breacher, even though my staff hates it because they're always like, dude, <laughs> slow down, right?
it's easy to have the idea, but it's hard to actually put it into place. So now, veteran-owned and operated, I'm sure knowing you means that you support some veteran organizations as well. Talk to me about that. Absolutely. You know, it's one of the biggest. It's one of the biggest parts of our company, and I feel like it's probably one of the most influential. Just because I learned uh, after getting out of the military, one of the biggest problems vets have getting out is that they struggle because they don't have a mission. They don't feel like they're in the game, supporting the boys anymore. Yep. And so that's one of the things we try and do at Bottle Breacher and we support a lot of veteran nonprofits. So I guess what we're getting at here is that the American thing to do is to buy these products because America. So guys, that's gonna wrap it up. Uh, very, very simple request. Out of respect for Eli, out of respect for all of the men and women who serve and protect our communities and our country and who join us on this show, we ask you to take that two seconds to hit the share button. It takes you literally two seconds. It helps bring awareness to these stories and to show that just like you and I, they just want to go home to their families every single day after serving all of us. So to all those of you who are watching, thank you for your attention. Thank you for sharing. God bless America. And make bottle opening great again. <laughs> You're welcome, dude. You're welcome. Keep that in there. There you go. That's great.